Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Tonight, the New York Mets open up a series against the Cincinnati Reds here at the Polo Grounds. Ralph Kanna, Bob Murphy, and I are on hand to bring you every bit of the action. And here is the lineup and batting order for the Cincinnati Reds. Leading off and playing third base, Eddie Casco. Batting second and playing second base, Pete Rose. Batting third and playing right field, Vader Benson. Batting fourth and playing left field, Frank Robinson. Batting fifth and playing first base, Gordon Coleman. Batting sixth and catching, Johnny Edwards. Batting seventh and playing shortstop, Leo Cardman. Batting eighth and catching, Tommy Harper. Batting ninth and pitching tonight for the Cincinnati Reds, left-hander, Jim O'Toole. Jim O'Toole has won six games and lost one this season. He has won five straight games. For the New York Mets, leading off and playing third base, Charlie Neal. Batting second and playing second base, Ron Hunt. Batting third and playing first base tonight, Ed Cranville. Batting fourth and playing left field, Frank Thomas. Batting fifth and playing right field, Chris Cook. Batting sixth and playing center field, Jim Hickman. Batting seventh and catching, Norm Kelly. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, Al Moran. Batting ninth and pitching for the New York Mets, Carl Willie. Carl has won two games and lost one thus far this season. And one of them was a 2 nothing shutout over the Chicago Cubs. The umpires for tonight, Ed Sudol at the plate, Al Foreman at first base, Tom Gorman at second, Dan Landis around at third. Carl Willie has completed his warm-up crosses. There goes the throw down to second base and around the horn, stepping into the batter's box is third baseman Eddie Casco with a season batting average of 294. He's a right-hand batter from Linden, New Jersey, Eddie Casco. Coaching at first base for the Cincinnati Reds and six fifth through and around at third is Reggie Otero. Willie is into the windup and here's the pitch. Swung on and driven deep to left field. Thomas is ranging back and he makes the catch for the out. That ball was well hit by Casco and it should be pointed out that the wind is blowing in very simply here at game time tonight. And uh, that one was held up a little bit. Enabling Frank Thomas to make the catch in the warning track. Here is young Pete Rose, the second baseman, coming up. He's 21 years of age. He is a switch hitter. Played at Macon in the Sally League last year. Hitting 274 thus far this season. Tries to drag it into strike. And running up and out of the batter's box. Trying to drag bust. That brought Charlie Neal in at a gallop at third base. This is the first time for young Pete Rose to play baseball in the city of New York. This is his first exposure to Met Fever. He got off to a slow start, was taken out of the lineup, put back in, and the John Wells is coming back. There's a breaking ball low. One and one to count. This is not the first time that Carl Willie and Jim O'Toole have faced each other in Cincinnati earlier this season. Willie and O'Toole faced each other, and the Reds won by a score of 5 to nothing. That was on April 17th. Johnny Edwards hit a grand slam homer off Carl Willie. That pitch is low for ball. Two and one. And the grand slammer came in the first inning and put the Reds out in front, where they were never headed and went on to win by a score of 5 nothing. Willie hoping to even up the score tonight. It's a 2-1 pitch coming now to Pete Rose. It's a fastball in there for a call strike. It's 2-2. Two, two. And this is a Met crowd here tonight, up roaring on every pitch in the first inning before the ball game during batting practice. A couple of the veterans of the National League, Wally Post and Gene Freeze, were asking me about this Met crowd. They said that they had heard about it from ball clubs around the league, and they wanted to know just what it was. Pitch is low for a ball. Three and two. Well, 
Well, they should have remembered from that time they came in here last August, and the Mets beat them three out of five. Although I must admit that the Mets fever has spread somewhat since last August. This will be a payoff pitch. Carl Willie defeat Rose with one man out, and it's on the way, and it's swung out, ground ball to short. Moran has it over to Hutchman. That was a train pool in time, and he's out. Ed Greenfield playing first base tonight. Two men out. Nobody on base and Beta Pinson coming up. Beta Pinson is batting 222. Five doubles, two triples, one home run. 11 runs batted in. We're in the top half of the first inning, the first game of this series. Pick is swung on and belted deep to center. Hickman is going back now. It's going over his head. Went all the way to the low green fence, and Beta Pinson's on his way to third. Relay comes in, and it's being run back to the infield by Moran, and holding it third is Beta Pinson with a ball hit into the wind, over the head of Jim Hickman. Hickman misjudged it, came in a step set, and then had to turn and go back, and it sailed over his head for a triple. Two men out to run at third. One of the hottest hitters in the league right now, Frank Robinson, is up. He finished second in the National League batting race last year, finishing behind only Tommy Davis of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Last night against Houston, Robinson was 5 for 5 and 7 runs batted in. All told, he's batting 301 right now with 6 home runs and 22 runs batted in. That pitch is low for a ball. for the New York Mets. Works for the wind-up with two men out and the runner's third, and the pitch is low for a ball. 2-0 now to Frank Robinson. The game having just begun here at the polo ground, so if you're around in the vicinity, come on out. Plenty of seats available right now. Pitch. Breaking ball in there for a call strike. The Mets with an infield tonight of Ed Crane Poole at first base, Ron Hunt at second, Al Moran at short, and Charlie Neal at third. Frank Collison left, Jim Hickman in center, Cliff Cook in right. At pitch miss low and inside, it's three balls and one strike out of Robinson. On deck is first baseman Gordon Coleman. Temperature 56 degrees at game time. Now the 3 1 pitch to Frank Robinson. Going on and fouled off. Hit him right on the foot as he stood there in about his box. Ricocheted out onto the playing field. Norm Terry receives it. Tosses it over to Ed. Two dollar puts another ball in play. The count. Two dogs working up that ball to uh, try to keep it in play. Frequently, what happens is uh, a ball like that will have shoe polish on it. And uh, that's why it's taken out. If they can rub it off and uh, restore it, then you can leave the ball in play. But it's the dark spot that takes it out. It's a full count now. The wind up in the payoff pitch. Swung out and missed. He's stuck it out. Top of the first, the Reds got no run, one hit, no errors, one left. The end of a half inning, it's the Cincinnati Reds nothing and the New York Mets coming up nothing. Well, let's stay right on the subject of baseball and see if you have the answer to this Rheingold riddle. Let's suppose the batter hits a long fly ball down the right field foul line. The right fielder comes over to the line in an attempt to make the catch. With his feet in fair territory, he extends his hands over the foul line and drops the ball. Got it? Feet in fair territory, ball drops in foul territory. Well, the correct ruling is foul ball. The position of the ball in relation to the foul line is the determining factor, so foul ball is the correct ruling in this case. Now, here's a ruling, a rule of thumb that's correct in any case. If you want fear, a fear should taste, the one to order is right gold extra dry. And those two words, extra dry, tell you why. Yes, sir, they tell you that Rhine Gold has a taste all its own, brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Enjoy some. Jim O. 
Cool is on the mound for the Cincinnati Reds. One of the big winners in the National League thus far. He's won six games in the last one. He's won five straight. He's 26 years of age. Six feet tall, 201 pounder from the city of Cincinnati. Against the Mets this year, O'Toole has won one in last time. His record last year in the National League, 16 victories and 13 losses. Against the Mets last year, Jim O'Toole won one and lost one. Here's Charlie Neal left to lead off for the Mets. Charlie's batting 237, one home run and six runs batted in. He's a right-hand batter. Even with a bag at third, is the third baseman, Eddie Casco. As Jim O'Toole gets the sign, he dips into the windup, and here's the pitch. Then tight for ball one. You may recall that Jim O'Toole was the starting pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds in the 1961 World Series against the New York Yankees. Joey Jay pitched the second game, but O'Toole was the man who pitched the first one, lost it 2-0. Pitched well enough to win. Here's the pitch. Swung on and sliced off to the right side out of play. One and one. They count to Charlie Neal. He's been hitting the ball well of late. Charlie's in and waiting. As O'Toole is getting aside from his battery mate Johnny Edwards. The wind up and the pitch. It's a little tight for the ball. It's two and one. The New York Mets have been just swept. A three-game set from the Philadelphia Phillies in the last two games of the series will one in the bottom half of the ninth inning. It's been an exciting baseball week here at the Polo Grounds. It's 2-1 pitch. And that's why I'm having stuck in there and knocked it down as he started to lean in and suddenly hit the deck in a sitting position. Three balls and one strike to count to Charlie Neal. He looks down to Cookie Lollygetta, the coach at third. Sally Hemus is the coach at first. Wind still blowing in stiffly here at the polo ground. Here's a pitch swung on, and it's a high timer to the right side. Pete Rose feels it first to first, and he drops the ball. He's safe. Gordon Coleman drops the ball at first base. Gordon is a base hit. It's a base hit. Charlie Neal is on first. The official score has ruled it base hit. It is a high hopper going down towards second. It had to be charged by young Pete Rose. He threw underhand over the first, and Gordon Coleman dropped the ball. The official score of the opinion that Neal would have beaten it anyway, so it is scored as a base hit. This is Ron Hunt at the plate with a batting average of 299 for the season. Three doubles, one triple, one home run, six runs batted in. The left-hander checks the runner. Here's the pitch. Swung on, and a hit and run play, and feeds the left. Going back at Frank Robinson, makes the catch. Charlie Neal at second, has to come all the way back to first. They played hit and run on the first pitch. Ron Hunt hits the ball well. Neal off and running was already at second. He held up there. As you see Frank Robinson pull it down in deep left. One away, and Ed Train Booth coming up. 18-year-old first baseman of the Mets is hitting 261 with four doubles, one triple, one home run, and three runs batted in. He had a big base hit in the bottom half of the ninth inning yesterday, one that kept that rally alive. That pitch is inside for ball one to Ed Cranepool. Jim O'Toole has the sign. Charlie Neal leads off the bag at first and the pitch to Crane Booth. Swung on a slice foul on the left field line, going on up and into the upper deck. He slammed that one to the opposite field of foul ball. Casey Stingle keeping left-hand batter Ed Crane Booth in the lineup tonight against left-hand pitcher Jim Coleman at first base is holding against runner Charlie Neal. Gasco is in on the edge of the grass at third. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed. Took a ripple. One and two. Frank Thomas is on deck now for the Mets. The 
nearest member of the Mets, Chico Fernandez, is here in uniform wearing number 12. Again, O'Toole has the sign into the stretch position. And the one-two pitch. Swung on and foul back. He's still alive. It's on the screen and out of play. One ball and two strikes to Ed Cranepool. Jim O'Toole takes a moment. Rub up the ball. I'm sure we don't have to tell you what the crowd's doing. Two pitch, swung on and foul back. Edwards hoping for a play, is coming back. Here's the dugout, this one's in the stands and out of play. Held back there by the wind, blowing in. So the count holds at one and two. Charlie Neal is still the base runner at first with one man out. There is no score in the game, and we're in the bottom half of the first inning. It's been a big week of baseball at the Polo Grounds, and a big weekend starting right now. So make your plans. We'd like to have you out here tomorrow afternoon, Sunday, or both. Ladies Day tomorrow afternoon and a big doubleheader on Sunday and that will conclude the current homestand of the New York Mets. Jim O'Toole has the sign now. Neil leads at first base. And the one-two pitch. Little tight gets by and Neil moves on down to second base. He rounds second and Edwards comes up with the ball at the screen, breaks the throw and is running it back and Neil, who took a wide turn at second, goes back to the bag. Wild pitch. Score that one as a wild pitch. Well, the Mets won a ball game yesterday in the bottom half of the ninth inning on a wild pitch. They had just seen Charlie Neal move to second here, and the count to Ed Crane Bull is two and two. Doesn't take this crowd long to warm up to the ball game. set position. Pitch is swung on and fouled off to the left side and out of play. Two and two is the count. That's Matty Red there. Gordon Coleman at first. Pete Rose at second. Leo Cardenas at short. And Eddie Casco at third. Frank Robinson at left. Tommy Harper at center and Beta Benson at right. Johnny Edwards catching. Jim O'Toole pitching. Check. And here's the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. He's second out. That is the first strikeout for 0 2. With two men out, right hand batter Frank Dallas coming up. Dallas is batting 205. Two doubles, one triple, three home runs, and 10 runs batted in. So with two men out, Mets have Charlie Neal in scoring position at second base. It's a nothing-nothing game in the bottom half of the first inning. O'Toole looking in to get a sign from Johnny Edwards. Up and into the stretch. And the pitch. It's high for a ball. One and over the count. Cliff Cook is swinging about on deck for the Mets now. Again, O'Toole is set. right there. It's up the alley. He makes the catch as they had swung the defense way over on Thomas, so the set drive. The Jordan there, they might have been an in-between. It was right at Tommy Harper. And in the bottom half of the first inning, the Mets got no runs on one hit, no errors and one left. And at the end of one inning, the score is the Reds nothing, the Mets nothing. Yeah, 
Well, the Cincinnati Reds will be here again tomorrow afternoon. And game time is 2 p.m. and it's a Ladies' Day attraction. Then uh, on Sunday afternoon, it's Mother's Day, of course, and uh, a big doubleheader here. The Mets and the Cincinnati Reds, and that'll be your last chance to see the Mets before. They head out on a long road trip that will take them on to Houston, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and then to St. Louis. Mets will not be back until May 28th, so we hope you'll plan to be here tomorrow or Sunday or both. Tickets are now on sale at the advanced ticket window at the Polo Grounds, which is open seven days a week. There's a Mets ticket office at Grand Central Station and one at Pennsylvania Station, and they're open on Saturday as well as weekdays. So if you want to pick up tickets tomorrow, uh, you can do it right there. You can make a ticket reservation at any of the Howard Closed stores in the greater New York area. You want to order tickets for future games by mail. The address is Ticket Manager, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. Box seats are 350 each. Reserve seats are 250. Enclosed 25 cents additionally for postage and for handling. In the top half of the second inning, first baseman Gordon Coleman is coming up for the Reds. Coleman's a left-hand batter hitting 220. Five doubles, four home runs, and 11 runs batted in. Willie with a wind-up and a pitch. It's outside for a ball. Again, Willie is set to work. Pitch is swung out and fouled off. This one fouled off of uh, the mask of Ed Sudol, the umpire behind the plate. So Stan Landis, the umpire at third, comes running down to see if Sudol is all right. the mask and rubbing his jaw. Apparently it hit him right uh, where the bottom portion of the mask comes underneath the jaw. The count is one and one to Gordon Coleman. Right hand to Carl Willie with the pitch. It's high for ball two and one. Tomorrow, we're going to have Al Jackson pitching for the New York Mets against Joey Jay of the Cincinnati Reds. Here's 2-1 pitch. Outside. Three balls and one strike. on the crane pool. One away. And Johnny Edwards is coming up. Edwards has been melting the baseball this season for the Cincinnati Reds. His batting average right now is 341. He has eight doubles, one home run, and 21 runs batted in. That one home run was a grand slammer off Carl Willie. This time he pulls a foul ball on the ground back at first base out of play. Strike one is the count. Carl time and he's gone out to have a word with Carl Willie. Edward steps back in. Here's the strike one pitch. It's blowing away for a ball. It's one and one. New York Mets starting the night. In eighth place in the National League standings, the Mets have won 12 and lost 15. Here 
There's a swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes to Johnny Edwards. Cincinnati Reds have won 12 and lost 13. So the Mets and the Reds are all even in the win column. Mets have lost two more games than have the Reds. It's a swing and a high fly ball to center field. Jim Hickman getting this one lined up. Now comes in and makes the catch. That wind is tricky. Two men out, nobody on base, and that'll bring up Leo Kardinus. Kardinus is hitting 260. Ten doubles, four triples, one home run, and nine runs batted in. There was no afternoon action in the Major Leagues today. Starting play tonight in the National League, the San Francisco Giants on top. Chicago Cubs in second place. It's a swing and a foul ball, back and out of play. St. Louis Cardinals are in third place. Pittsburgh Pirates fourth. Los Angeles Dodgers fifth. Cincinnati Reds sixth. Milwaukee Braves seventh. New York Mets eighth. Philadelphia Phillies ninth. Houston Colts 45 tenth. And batter is low with one and one to Chico Cardinus, the shortstop of the Cincinnati Reds, with two men out and nobody on base. No score in the game, top half of the second inning. Ken Willie is set to work. Swing and a ground ball going through the hole into left field for a base hit. Frank Thomas is over and up with it, relays it in, and Cardinus turns and holds with a ground single to left. That is the second hit for the Reds off Willie. With two men out, center fielder Tommy Harper is coming up. Harper's batting 216. Oh, a run batted in this season. He's a fellow who burned up the Pacific Coast League in San Diego last year. One of two rookies that the Reds stuck in there at the start of this season. Cincinnati Reds, National League champions of 1961. They finished third last year. That pitch is in there for a call strike. Here's a throw over to first base, not in time. It's starting to get back safely. Pitch low and wave. One and one. Willie checks the runner. One one pitch bounces in low. It's blocked by Sherry and there's no advance. Sherry getting rid of the match sort of bounced it off of. Uh, Tommy Harper. Two and one to count to Harper. I'm sure that you're up to date on all the baseball news of yesterday in which the Mets sent Larry Foss to Milwaukee and they sent him on to Denver in getting Chico Fernandez who had come to Milwaukee briefly from the Detroit Tigers. It's one on. It's a ground ball to third. Charlie Neal up with it. Goes to Hunt. He's out. And the side is retired. So Harper has fourth Cardinals. Neal to Hunt at second base. And in the top half of the second, the Reds got no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of an inning and a half, it's the Reds nothing, the Mets nothing. If you like music, I think you'll love this. For the first right taste of Rhino, is what good food deserves. It goes with chips, potato chips, and even with burgers. Rheingold Extra Dry is brewed of the choicest ingredients, the long, slow, cochlear way for flavor that's brisk and bright and clean clear through. It's beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. My beer is Rheingold, it's the dry beer. Think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. 
It's not bitter. It's not sweet. It's the dry flavor treat. Won't you try? Going to the bottom half of the second inning, and it'll be Cliff Cook coming up to lead off for the New York Mets. Cliff Cook playing right field tonight. He's batting 114 for the season. He has one home run and three runs batted in, but what a home run because it came in the second game of Sunday's doubleheader with a man on base against the San Francisco Giants and put the Mets out in front 2-0, and they went on to win the ball game. was obtained by the Mets from the Cincinnati Reds last year. Here's 0-2 with a windup and the pitch. It's high for a ball. No score in this game in the bottom half of the second inning. It's low for a ball. 2-0 to Cliff Cook. Rhythmic applause has begun. That pitch is high. Ball three. Three and order. Cliff Cook. Hickman is on deck for the New York Mets. Uh, it's in there for a call strike. As Hickman bluffed the button, took it. It's three and one. He's looking down to Cookie Lavagetto now to get a sign. Pitches are controlled by the manager, of course, as to whether he is free to swing away or whether he uh, will take. The hit is three and two. Full count out is Cliff Cook. So we'll have a payoff pitch from Jim O'Toole to Cliff Cook. O'Toole taking a long time to get his sign. Has it into the windup. Here's a pitch. Swung on. Has to fly ball to right center field. Going back his way defense, but he's there and he has it for the out. Right now, in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. Time, 8 This is WGYS Connected 810 on your dial, where the time is 28 minutes until 9. Coming up now is Jim Hickman. He is batting 244. Four doubles, two triples, three home runs, 16 runs batted in, leads the club in that department. This is Jim Hickman's 26th birthday. Here's the windup, and a pitch, it's low for a ball. And strangely enough, some of our mail this evening, uh, that we got this evening, contained uh, birthday greetings for Jim Hickman. It's outside, it's 2-0 oh now to Hickman. Check it, it's 1-1, one and one. I beg your pardon, 1-1. One one. Sherry is now on deck. O'Toole started to pump, changed his mind, gets another sign. That one missed. Good one. There seems to be some uh, difference of opinion as to what the count is, and Ed Sudol has not uh, been calling him distinctly. And so now Hickman steps back, looks down to Cookie Lavagetto. Three balls, no strikes, I believe, is the count. There's been a little difference of opinion there. Here's a pitch, and it is tight, and he walks him, ball four. So Hickman goes to first base. That will bring up Norm Sherry, and if I were you, I sure know what I'd be doing right now. I'd be pouring myself up a tall crust because the Rheingold Extra Dry. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste, and dry tells you why. Enjoy it along with the game. Norm 
Cherry is a right-hand batter, hitting 143. He has two home runs and four runs batted in. Jim Hickman leads at first base, and Gordon Coleman holds against the runner. Jim O'Toole is up and into a set position. Pitch is low, and it's dug up out of the dirt by catcher Johnny Edwards. 1-0. York Mets and the Cincinnati Reds battling here at the Polo Grounds. Hickman again takes his lead. Pitch to Sherry. He's running. It's swung on. It fouled off. As Jim Hickman was moving on the pitch, it's out of play. So Casey Single uh, playing hit and run, and it's one and one count now to Norm Sherry. Nothing to mess, nothing. O2 gets the sign again from Johnny Edwards. Checks and deals. And it's in there for a call strike. One ball, two strikes. Al Moran waiting on deck for the Mets. I'm sure you know that Mets first baseman Gil Hodges has been placed on the disabled list for 30 days. Mar Thronberry and Ted Schreiber have been sent to the Mets Farm Club at Buffalo. Here's a one-two pitch. And it misses outside. It's two and two. One man on the runner at first base. back out of the batter's box that O2 was taking an extremely long time to get settled on the side. Cookie Lava Jetta bouncing up and down and then the coach's box at third. O2 comes set. Here's a 2-2 offering. Swung on and foul back. Hit out of play as Casco started and changed his mind. This one settled into the upper deck. And the scramble for the souvenir is on. dust across the infield for the moment and Sherry stays out of the batter's box. Now he settles in. Hickman leads off the bag at first. The defense plays Sherry almost straight away. It's 2-2 two -two pitch. He's running. Swung out and missed the throw to second base and he is out at second base. As the shortstop Cardinals made the tag, it is turned into a strikeout double play. Two to six uh, on Hickman. And in the bottom half of the second, the Mets got no runs on no hits, no errors, and none left. At the end of two, the score is the Reds nothing, the Mets nothing. Well, we've gone through two innings here at the Polo Grounds. No score. Carl Willie against Jim O'Toole. And coming in here now to tell you about what's going on at the Polo Grounds, Ralph Kiter. Thank you, Lindsay. Now there once again, this is certainly another big night for the Mets. No score in the ball game in other games in the National League after a game inning in one half. Milwaukee nothing, Philadelphia nothing. After one inning, St. Louis against Pittsburgh, no score. Chicago scheduled at Houston later on the night, and San Francisco at Los Angeles at night. 
the American League, the Yankees have one. Baltimore, nothing after two. Four to McCormick in that one. No score in the Washington-Boston game after two. Kansas City scheduled at Minnesota, Los Angeles, and Chicago, and Cleveland at Detroit. Right here, it's nothing-nothing, and the first man up as Carl Willey comes in, looks at a curveball over for strike one. Jim O'Toole batting for the Cincinnati Reds. right-hand batter as Willie takes a long swing and the one-strike pitch is looked at for strike two. Jewell has two hits and 18 trips to the plate. So far in the game, the Reds have picked up two hits, the Mets have one. They're in the top of the third, no score. Now the pitch back to the plate, a curve, a swing, and a foul ball down on the ground so the count will stay at 0-2. Ed Grainful playing at first base at second base, Ken Hunt. The shortstop is Al Moran, the third baseman, Charlie Neal. In the outfield, Frank Thomas, Jim Hickman, and Cliff Cook, left to right. Outfield shaded toward right field against the pitcher. Now Woolley back to work and the two-strike pitch. Bouncing ball hit in the hole. Neal goes over. He cuts it off. He throws the first base in time. Johnny Neal going to his left, cutting in front of the shortstop to make the play. And with one out, the batter will be Eddie Casco. Casco batting for the second time, flat out the left field, his first time up. He's batting 286. Casco, a right-hand batter. Get the drive and the run so far this year in 35 trips to the plate. And the first pitch to Casco is low inside, ball one. Carl Willey now through two and one third innings has given up two hits, struck out one and walked none. And the pitch back to the plate. Fastball right through there, strike one. One ball, one strike. a strong win over the San Francisco Giants in the second game of Sunday's doubleheader. He won it 4-2. Now he comes back with a curve. There's one popped in the shallow center. Hunt's going back. He has room, and he one-hands it. Ron Hunt making the challenge. He was the only man to be able to get to it. The wind blowing him strongly from center field kept Hickman from getting to the ball. And Hunt turned and one hand the ball number two, and that brings up the second baseman, Pete Rose. Pete bounced to short his first time up. He's batting 270 this year. One home run, six runs batted in. He bats from the left-hand side. He has tremendous speed. And the first pitch is high for ball one. Neal at third base, right on top of the left-hand batter in case of a bunt. And here's the pitch back, and there is a strike call. One ball, one strike. No score in the game. We're in the top of the third inning. Two men out. The Cincinnati Reds in the first game of a four-game series. Now the pitch, the 1-1 one -one pitch, mounts the second. Ron Hunt plays it back. He comes up with the ball, throws in time. Every side to side. One, two, three for Carl Willie in the top of the third and the score at the end of two and one half innings of play. The Reds nothing, the New York Mets nothing. Well, fans, you've heard us say it's beer as beer should be. Well, think of that for a minute. Isn't that what you want in a beer? Don't you want a beer that's refreshingly dry to the taste with a flavor that's brisk and bright and clean clear through? Well, that is Rheingold. Rheingold is brewed to be just that. Brewed in the choicest ingredients. Brewed the long, slow, costly away. Rheingold is everything you look for in beer. And dry tells you why. Yes, extra dry means Rheingold's a better beer. It's a wonderful beer. And extra dry means Rheingold beer is more refreshing. And the more refreshing a beer is, the more you're going to enjoy it. So enjoy fine cold Rheingold beer. Join the millions who have made Rheingold New York's largest selling beer. Well, 
Now the jam starts here at the Polo Grounds. Let's go, Mets. A fine crowd out there, and it's a cool evening. No stars so far in the ball game. The Mets against Jim O'Toole, a left-hander who has won five straight. His record is 61. One of his wins is shut out over the Mets in Cincinnati. batter for the Mets will be Al Moran. He's batting for the first time. He takes a 213 average to the plate. Al batting from the right-hand side. And they'll do it with his first pitch. A foul ball straight back for strike one. Al has no home runs in the major leagues. He has hit three runs across the plate. He has one extra base hit. That was a two-base hit one more to it, a three base hit to make it two extra base hits. Moran batting from the right hand side, swings and pops the ball up. First baseman Gordy Coleman is calling for the ball. And he makes it. And the first pitch is high for ball one. Neal at third base, right on top of the left-hand batter in case of a bunt. And here's a pitch back, and there is a strike call. One ball, one strike. No score in the game. We're in the top of the third inning. Two men out. The Cincinnati Reds in the first game of a four-game series. Now the pitch, the 1-1 pitch, mounts the second. Ron Hunt plays it back. He comes up with the ball, throws in time. That retires the side. One, two, three for Carl Willie in the top of the third and the score at the end of two and one half innings of play. The Reds nothing, the New York Mets nothing. Well, fans, you've heard us say it's beer as beer should taste. Well, think of that for a minute. Isn't that what you want in a beer? Don't you want a beer that's refreshingly dry to the taste with a flavor that's brisk and bright and clean clear through? Well, that is Rheingold. Fine gold is brewed to be just that. Brewed in the choicest ingredients. Brewed the long, slow, costlier way. Fine gold is everything you look for in beer. And dry tells you why. Yes, extra dry means Rhine gold's a better beer. It's a wonderful beer. And extra dry means Rhine gold beer is more refreshing. And the more refreshing a beer is, the more you're going to enjoy it. So enjoy fine cold Rhine gold beer. Join the millions who have made Rhine Gold New York's largest selling beer. Well, the chance starts here at the Polo Grounds. Let's go, Mets. A fine crowd on hand. It's a cool evening. No stars so far in the ball game. The Mets against Jim O'Toole, a left-hander who has won five straight. His record is six and one. One of his wins is shut out over the Mets in Cincinnati. batter for the Mets will be Al Moran. He's batting for the first time. He takes a 213 average to the plate. Al batting from the right-hand side. And O'Toole with his first pitch. A foul ball straight back for strike one. Al has no home runs in the major leagues. He has hit three runs across the plate. He has one extra base hit. That was a two-base hit one more to it, a three base hit to make it two extra base hits. Moran batting from the right hand side, swings and pops the ball up. First baseman Gordy Coleman is calling for the ball. And he makes the catch. Coleman had played the win for more than it was and he had to go to his right at the last minute to pick that one up. And the Reds now have one out and the batter will be Carl Willie. right-hand batter looking for his first hit this year. He's been at bat five times. No score in the game. Bottom half of the third one man out. And the first pitch is hit the right field. Taking Vincent back a few steps. He is there. Wind holding the ball up now and he makes the catch. 
You're out of Johnny Neal will come up for the second time in the game. Johnny had an infield hit his first time up. That raised his average to 245. Charlie went on down to second base in a wild pitch. And that is the furthest any Met batter has reached against Jim O'Toole. Reds had a run at third base on a triple by Veda Pitts, and he failed to score. Stahl with two men out in the bottom half of the third, no score. Johnny Neal, the third baseman, the batter. Charlie takes for strike one. Charlie trying to make O'Toole work a little bit. He's got to weigh pretty well here so far in the first two and two-thirds innings. He got Willie on one pitch. Moran on two. Now the pitch back is fouled straight back for strike two. O'Toole with a fastball. O'Toole pitched a one hitter last year. The only hit came in the eighth inning with one out. That was a double by Bob Skinner. O'Toole's one hitter coming against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He won a three nothing. He had a big year. He won 16 and lost 13. Now the two strike pitch. It's high for ball one. the red pitchers in strikeouts last year with 170. So far in this game, he has struck out one batter. Now the one-two pitch, it's inside for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Make it two batters. He struck out Crane Bull on a high fastball, and then he got Norm Sherry on a curveball. The strikeout against Sherry was a strikeout double play. It was a hit-run play, and Jim Hickman was thrown out at second base. Now the 2-2 pitch by O'Toole is just outside. O'Toole thought he had it. He was starting to the dugout. A full count now. Three balls and two strikes with Ron Hunt in the on-deck circle. Bottom half of the third inning. Two men out. No score in the game. Here's the windup in the pitch to Neal. And there's a hard swing and a miss with a fastball for strike three. That retires the side. The third strikeout for two in the ball game. And the score. After no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left. The Reds nothing, the New York Mets. Nothing. Well, this looks like the start of a real big series. The Cincinnati Reds are coming on strong now to make their bid in the National League race. And the Mets, of course, having won four straight games. They have been red hot. Here at home, they've won six and lost only three. And they have won 12 of their last 19 ball games. Tomorrow afternoon, Al Jackson is scheduled to go against the Reds. He'll be opposed by Joey Jay, a 20-game winner in 1962. That'll be a Ladies' Day single game. Game time at 2 o'clock, all ladies. A minute to the ballpark, 50 cents. So if you can make it, come on out and join us here at the Polo Ground. And a big doubleheader on Sunday, the Reds against the Mets. That will conclude the present homestand. Reds featuring such stars as Frank Robinson, Veda Pinson, Johnny Everett, the young catcher who's coming on strong. He is fifth in the National League batting race at this point. Jordy Comer, the powerhouse first baseman, Gene Freeze, Jerry Lynch, and of course, it'll be Joey Jay, Bob Perky, and Jim Maloney, some of the star pitchers for the Reds. Tickets for... These coming three games are available tomorrow afternoon if you're down at Grand Central Station. The ticket office located there at the Vanderbilt Avenue ramp. Also in Pennsylvania Station tomorrow, the ticket office open there in the Long Island Witty Room. Or you can pick up your tickets right here at the ballpark at the advanced reservation window. The conclusion of a big homestand for the New York Mets. Saturday, a doubleheader Sunday. Saturday's game, a single game. Now the top of the fourth, and the first pitch to Veda Pinson, the curveball over for strike one. Pinson tripled to center field, the ball misjudged by Jim Hickman. A real tough win going in from center field. And with Frank Robinson batting, he's in the on-deck circle now. Pinson was left to third base. There's a ground ball hit to second. Hunt takes it out, throws him out. 
Carl Benson, who is batting 230, is out for the first out here in the top of the fourth. No score, and the batter coming on is Frank Robinson. Robinson batting 298. He had a big night last night against Houston. He drove in seven runs to raise his total to 22. He struck out on a curveball his first time up. Frank batting for the right-hand side. And the first pitch by Willie is hit off the end of the bat over toward second. A tough play for Hunt. He can't handle the ball. Hunt had to hurry, moving to his left. He got the ball about in the grass. Then he dropped it. It went on through his legs and it scored an error on the big scoreboard, the Rheingold scoreboard in center field. That was a very difficult chance. Hunt had to move way to his left to come up with the ball to get in front of it. In his haste to throw, he couldn't find the handle. So Robinson's on at first base, the first air in the ball game, and the batter now will be Gordy Coleman. Coleman, a left-hand batter. And the first pitch is in the dirt, dug out by Sherry. A throw to first base, and tag too late. Coleman batting 217. He has the second most home runs in the ball club. He has four. Frank Robinson leads the club with six. Now a quick throw to first base. Robinson beats the tag. Robinson, a real good base runner. He has good speed. And he now goes. And the pitch is swung on a miss. There's a throw by Sherry. The tag is not made. The ball getting away from Al Moran. It's a stolen base. The throw was on the second base side as the shortstop covered. Moran tried to move across, haul it down with one hand, and tag Robinson as he was sliding by. He couldn't find the handle, couldn't hold on to the ball. And Robinson gets credit for a stolen base. One ball, one strike, John, on Gordy Coleman. No score, one out in the top of the fourth inning. Carl Woolley, a long look at the sign, now set. And he comes back with a fastball. It's fouled down in the dirt back of the catcher for strike two. The on-deck batter, John Edwards, made the play of the foul ball. New ball put in play, but Willie didn't like it. He asked for another one and got it. One ball and two strikes, working to Cody Coleman. Here's the pitch. It's outside a fastball. Norm Sherry walking toward the pitcher's mound before returning the ball to the mound. Two balls and two strikes. Reds with a base runner at second base. Frank Robinson there, no score in the game. One man out in the top of the fourth. Willie now back to the plate, and there's a swing and a miss at a third ball for strike three. Carl Willie using his good curveball now, picking up his second strikeout, both on curve. And he'll now work to John Edwards with two men out. Edwards started the game as the fifth leading batter in the National League. His first time up, he fired out to center field. That dropped his average to 3.37. He's a left-hand batter. He beat Carl Willie with a grand slam home run in the one appearance that Willie made against the Reds this year. And the first pitch is low for ball one. A fastball just below the knees. Norm Sherry thought he had it. Now Norm goes to second base. Throw is high, but hauled down by Al Moran. Edward 
Ward with one home run. That was the one against Willie with the bases loaded. That was his first grand slam home run in the major league. He has driven in 21 runs so far this year. Now the 1-0 pitch, a good curve, just low, though. Two balls and no strikes. The on-deck batter is Leo Cardenas, the right-hand batting shortstop. And now some paper blows out on the field, and North Jerry tries to grab it, and the wind takes it away, as it always does. So Norm has given up, and Ed Sudol is going to give it a try. He'll put the foot on it. No, he can't make it. And the piece of paper, evidently feeling sorry for both Sherry and Sudol, decides to fly away, and it's out of the playing field area. Boy, oh, that's suicide to try and pick up one of those papers out in front of the crowd like this, and the wind blowing like it is. You've got no chance. In play now, two balls and no strikes. And here's the pitch to Everett, just swinging a miss at a fastball. Oh, picking up his first strike. On the pitch, Ron Hunt was moving over to chase Frank Robinson back to the bag, and he was a little out of position on the pitch. Everett's trying to hit the ball through the hole at second base. Hunt playing a step in back of the dirt infield on the grass at second base. Now Willie back to work, and there's a pitch that misses low. Fast ball down below the knees, three balls and one strike. No score, the Reds with a base runner at second base, two out the top of the fourth. Balls and one strike, and now Carl Woolley turning around, moving Robinson back toward the bag. No play on, either the shortstop with the second baseman had broke, broken toward the bag. Now the pitch, fair ball gone, the right field, it was fair, it's a home run, and it's fair ball, a home run. Going in front of Johnny Edwards is Frank Robinson. Now Edwards crossing the plate with his second home run of the year. The Reds take the lead, two to nothing. Edwards hitting a 3-1 curveball, lining the shot right down into the second deck, just inside the foul ball. Now the pitch to Leo Gardner. It's a swing and a miss for strike one. Gardner's the right-hand batter. He's batting 257. back to the plate and there's a swing and a fastball for strike two. Reds now with three hits in the game. They have two runs. And they lead it two nothing. Two men out here in the top of the fourth. Willie with a two strike advantage now comes back with a full windup and he strikes him out. Swing at a high curveball for strike three. The runs are unearned, and in the inning for the Reds, they scored two unearned runs. On one hit, there was one error, a real tough play by Ron Hunt to make, a stolen base, and no one left on. And the score at the end of three, and one half innings of play. The Reds, two, the New York Mets, nothing. And now a word from Vice Roy Cigarette. I've been out with my truck for a week on the road and was heading on home with a 10-ton load. The trip was long. It felt good to get back. Then I went for a smoke and found an empty pack. I asked for my brand at a diner I know. The man said, All out of yours. Try these, Joe. Now, I only smoke filters, but these were too light. But a cute little waitress uh, set things right. She said, Try for it. Tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong. Not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now I smoke Viceroy, and it must be fate, because that waitress and I have a wedding day. Ah, that's right. So now I know when I'll take all bets. If you smoke all seven filter cigarettes, you'll find some too strong. Some too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. While we wait for Ron Hunt to come up, we'll use the time to pause for station identification. 
810 on your dial, WGY Schenectady. The time, two minutes past nine o'clock. Turner along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from the Polar Grounds. The Mets coming up here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. They need two to tie. Reds have taken the lead on a two-run home run by Gunny Edwards, their catcher. Leading off for New York will be Ron Hunt. He'll be followed by Ed Cranebull. And then Frank Thomas. On the mound for the Reds, Jim O'Toole. And the first pitch to Ron is inside for ball one. Ron lined the left field his first time up. The ball is in deep, but the wind held the ball up. He's batting 294. Now the left-hander comes back, and the pitch is high for ball two. A fastball. Two balls and no strikes. Mets sending their second, third, and fourth place batters to the plate against the left-hander, Jim O'Toole. O'Toole with a record of six wins and one loss. Now he comes back, and there's a swing and a foul ball. Ball going out of play. Two balls and one strike now. Has a lifetime record against the Mets of one win and one loss. The one win coming this year, a 5 0 shutout. And he comes back to Hunt, and there's a check in the swing. It'll cost him a strike. The pitch was over. Two balls and two strikes now, so two will even to count. First game of a four game series. Now the 2-2 pitch, a check and a swing, and he went far enough for call strike three. All strike three is Ron Hunt has struck out, and that strikeout is a fourth by Jim O'Toole in the game. His second in the row, and it brings up that great ball. Struck out his first time up. He is 0 for 1. He's batting 257. He had good swings with the left hander. Now the first pitch of curve breaking over in the outside corner. Strike one call. Now the one strike pitch. Fastball fouls straight back. Strike two. The umpiring crew here for tonight's game on the whole series. Sort of pretty local. Ed Sudol, the home plate umpire, was born in the Sage, New Jersey. Stan Landis was born in the Bronx. He's at first base. Making third base. Don Gorman lives in Whitestone, Long Island. And Al, Moore, Al Foreman comes from Morristown, New Jersey. There's a pitch outside. One ball and two strikes. Nothing game. The Reds lead. The Mets batting in the bottom half of the fourth inning. One out against them. And the pitch back to Ed. A swing and a miss for strike three. So three strikeouts in a row for Jim O'Toole. His fifth in the ball game. And now with two out, the batter will be Frank Thomas. Line to center field his first time up. He's batting 203. O'Toole working with a two run lead, taking a long look now, winds and comes to the plate. And he catches a fastball at the knees for strike one. strike count on the big left fielder. Frank with three home runs this year. He has driven in ten runs. And the pitch back is inside. One ball, one strike. Reds have two runs on three hits. The Mets have only one base hit against Jim O'Toole. 
got hit, an infield hit by Charlie Neal. They have yet to score. One ball and one strike, and the next pitch is outside. Fastball missing just above the knees. Two balls and one strike. They won 12 games. They've lost 13. They're five games out of first place. Now the pitch back to Thomas fouled away. So the count rounds out at two balls and two strikes. The Giants on top. Chicago in second place. St. Louis in third. Pittsburgh in fourth. Chicago, the surprising team in the National League so far this year. And they'll be coming in here to play the New York Mets when they return home from their road trip. They'll be playing here in the night game on the 28th of May, and then a doubleheader on the 30th. Here's a pitch to Thomas, it's fouled back, so the count stays at 2-2. Two two. Ball bouncing off the retaining wall, back of home plate, and coming all the way back out toward the pitcher's mound. Let's move on to Houston for three games, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And they'll play the Giants Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The Dodgers Sunday have Monday off, play the Dodgers Tuesday and Wednesday. After that, St. Louis, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's a drive to left, the base hit. Coming over is Frank Robinson. He cuts it off before it gets to the wall, and Thomas holds at first base. Now with their second base hit off O'Toole, the tying run comes to the plate. The batter is Cliff Cook. Cliff wide out to right field his first time up. He's batting 111. It was Cliff Cook who put the Mets on top of the game against the opposition earlier this week. He had a two-run home run. Here's the pitch, and it's inside for ball one. Helping Carl Woolley to defeat the Giants with a two-run home run. Now he's in the spot to help Carl again. He's a dying run here in the bottom of the fourth. Two men out. There's a ground ball hit down to third. Castro cuts the cross. He picks it up. Fires the first in time to retire the drive. In the inning for the Mets, no runs on one hit. No errors. One man left. And the score now after four. The Reds two. The New York Mets nothing. Now to check the scores around the league. Here is Lindsey Nelson. Cubs against the Houston Cold 45s in a game that will uh, be starting a little later. And on the West Coast tonight, the San Francisco Giants meeting the Dodgers in Los Angeles. That one, of course, also a much later start. The American League, at the end of five and a half innings of play, it's the New York Yankees won, the Baltimore Orioles won. Whitey Ford going against Mike McCormick. The end of three and a half innings of play in Boston, it's the Washington Senators two, the Boston Red Sox nothing. Tom Cheney going against Ike the lot. Osborne over in the fourth and nobody on for Washington. Kansas City at Minnesota against the Twins in the latest start. In Chicago, at the end of a half inning of play, it's the Angels nothing, the White Sox nothing, McBride against Pizarro. And in Detroit, at the end of a half inning, the Cleveland Indians nothing, Detroit Tigers nothing, Jerry Bell against Bill Reagan. Tommy Harper comes up for the Cincinnati Reds in the top half of the fifth inning. Facing right hand to Carl Willie as the Reds lead here by a score of two to nothing. Willie with the windup and the pitch. Low for ball one. After the New York Mets return from the road trip that will begin on Monday, they'll meet the Chicago Cubs and a night game on Tuesday night, May 28th, and then a big Memorial Day doubleheader on Thursday, May 30th. So mark those dates on your baseball calendars. Here's a swing and a miss. One and one. Those 
Chicago Cubs are doing great right now in second place in the National League standing. Ernie Banks, Ron Sando, Billy Williams, Bob Pugh, Larry Jackson, Dick Ellsworth, Lindy McDaniel, John Elson. They'll be in here on the night of May 28th and Memorial Day, May 30th. Swinging in a foul ball. One and two. Tommy Harper has been up one time. He forced Cardinals to second on a ground ball to third. Through four innings of play, the Reds have two runs on three hits, no errors. The Mets have no runs on two hits, one error. Two runs coming on a two-run homer by Johnny Edwards. Carl oh, Willie is taking a moment now to work on the ball. He's set. Here's the one-two pitch. Fired low. It's two and two. Tommy Harper leading off for the Cincinnati Reds here in the top half of the fifth inning. Willie starts the motion for the two-two pitch. Swung out and missed. Struck him out. Strike out number four for Willie. up his pitcher, Jim O'Toole. Went up one time and he grounded out. Third to first. Despite the fact that Jim O'Toole is a left-hander on the mound, he bats right. This is a fastball in there for a call strike one. I think it one to This pitch is a little low and it's one and one. Starting play tonight in the National League, Philippe Ballou of the San Francisco Giants was the leading batter, hitting 384. Wes Kevington, a uh, Philadelphia Phillies second. Followed by Dick Grover to the San Luis Cardinals, Bobby Wine of the Philadelphia Phillies, and Johnny Edwards of the Cincinnati Reds. Second five, Ron Fairley of the Los Angeles Dodgers leads him out. It's a swing and a foul ball. One and two of the count. Bill White of the St. Louis Cardinals, Charlie James of the St. Louis Cardinals, Henry Aaron of the Milwaukee Braves, and Orlando Cepeda of the San Francisco Giants. Finishing out the top ten batters in the National League. Home run leader in the National League is Henry Aaron of Milwaukee with ten. And Henry Aaron and... Philippe Ballou are tied with runs batted in 24 each. The pitch is fired high, 2 and 2 to 0 2, with one man out and nobody on base. The Reds leading the match here by a score of 2 to nothing. Again, Willie into the motion, and the pitch is fired low. The count is out full now to Jim 0 2. O'Toole has been up 18 times this year and has only two hits. His average is 105. Carl oh, Willie with the payoff pitch. Front on and sliced off to the right side and out of play. So the count holds at three and two. Here tomorrow afternoon, 2 p.m. And again, the 3 2 offering. Swing out and miss. Dropped by Cherry, picks it up and tags O2 to make no effort to run to first. Back out number five for Carl Willie. Two men out, nobody on base for the Reds, and Eddie Casco is coming up. Castro has slide to left and pop second. His two previous appearances. You may recall that in 1961 when the Reds won the National League tournament, Eddie Casco played a big role in that victory at shortstop. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike. Last year when Gene Freeze broke his leg in spring training, broke his ankle in spring training in Tampa, 
The Cincinnati Reds eventually had to move Casco over to third and insert Leo Cardenas in shortstop. That pitch is low for a ball. It's one and one. Cardenas performed so very well that there was little question this year if he's uh, taking over the shortstop position. Dean Freeze with stuff. Freeze with stuff. He and Casco have been used interchangeably there. Wind blowing in stiffly here at the moment at the polo ground. It's a breaking ball inside. This win is head on Mr. Matt Winnick racing all up and down this press box to retrieve, retrieve scattered statistics here and there. pitch. Uh, just a little low. Three balls and one strike. Pete Rose is waiting around on deck, arms folded. Willie getting a sign. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Four out and line foul into the upper deck, over the scoreboard and left. He uh, got around on it. Pulled it foul, so the count's full now to Casco at three and two. We're in the top half of the fifth inning and the Reds lead the Mets by a score of two to nothing. This is the first appearance of the Cincinnati Reds at the Polo Grounds this season. The Mets and the Reds played two games earlier this year, both at night in Cincinnati. Pitch is low, and Casco has drawn a walk. That is the first walk given up by Carl Willie tonight. So the Reds get a base runner. Switch hit to Pete Rose coming up. He bats left against the right hand to Carl Willie. Rose is grounded out short the first, grounded out second to first. Pete Rose batting 266 right now. It's a long jump in the Stanley League to the majors, but Pete Rose made it. in there for a call strike. Nothing in one, and Rose beat out a veteran performer, Don Blassingame, for the second base position. Blassingame, set his bat only 25 times this year and is batting 160, sitting on the bench tonight. Castro bluffs the start, the pitch is low to Pete Rose at the plate. It's one and one. Bainville is not holding Casco on at first with two men out. Willie has a sign for the 1-1 pitch. If Casco leads it first, pitch sails high, and it's 2-1. and one. That sends Norm Cherry here. Out to the mound to have a word with Carl Willie. He has walked Casco now, and he's got uh, behind on Pete Rose. Now Sherry comes back to take his position behind the plate. Pete Rose standing and swinging the bat. Fred Hutchinson, the big bear of the Cincinnati Reds, moving around in the dugout. He's got the jacket on tonight. Here's 2 1 pitch. The run is going through the second. And he is out at second base as the throw was on the second base side. And Al Moran had to come across to get it to tag one handed and made the tag on Casco. And Tom Gorman, the umpire, second says he's out, make it 2 to 6. And in the top half of the fifth inning, the Cincinnati Reds got no runs on no hits. No errors and none left, and at the end, the four and a half innings to play. It's the Reds, two, the Mets, nothing. And the bottom half of the fifth inning, New York Mets are going to be sending up Jim Hickman. It's his birthday, his 26th birthday. He has been up one time in this game, and he drew a walk. The Mets have had only three base runners in the game, and Jim Hickman was one of them. He was thrown out at second base on a strikeout double play. Jim 
Tom O'Toole, and he won five straight games this season as a record of 6-1, and, and here's the pitch. It's on a ground ball to third. Taken there by Casco, wings it over the first in time, and he's out. Hickman with a hard ground ball to third, fielded cleanly by Eddie Casco. One away, and Norm Sherry's coming up. That catcher's been up one time, and he struck out. And it became a strikeout double play when Hickman was thrown out at second. Cincinnati Reds, two, and the New York Mets, nothing. But the enthusiasm of the crowd continues unabated here. Something started. This crowd is ready to lend all the support it can. The left handed deals, and the pitcher's outside for ball one to Norm Sherry. Defense plays him straight away. Al Moran's on deck for the Mets. Here's the wind up to pitch and blowing away. Ball one. 
Rose grounded out in the first inning, grounded out in the third inning. Again, Carl Willie is set to work. Pitch is low. Rose had a notion, didn't swing the bat, and it's two balls and no strikes. Freddie Hutchinson gets a lot of mileage in the course of the season in that dugout. Up and down, up and down, and he's at it right now. Here is a 2-0 pitch. In there, fastball for a call strike. It's 2-1. and one. Hutch has a rather sad look on his face continuously. He was described once by Joe Garagiola as a very happy man whose face doesn't know it. Here's a 2-1 pitch. In there for a call strike. It's 2-2. Willie firing it in. Made a fence on his on deck. Willie gets the sign from Norm Sherry. And the 2-2 pitch. Here's a fastball in there for a call strike three. He's out of looking. Strikeout number six for Carl Willie. As he stays even with Jim O'Toole in the strikeout department. Six each. Here's Veda Fenson coming up. Made a triple in the first inning. It was a fly ball to center, misjudged by Jim Hickman. Went for a triple. Ready now for the playoff pitch. A ground ball. is on deck. Will he get the sign from Norm Sherry? And the 2-2 pitch. Here's a fastball in there for a call strike three. Caught him looking. Strikeout number six for Carl Willing. As he stays even with Jim O'Toole in the strikeout department. Six feet. Here's Veda Fenton coming up. Made a triple in the first inning. It was a fly ball to center, misjudged by Jim Hickman. Went for a triple, and he grounded out second to first in the fourth. Henson right now batting 228. That pitch is low, dug out by Norm Sherry, ball one. Top half of the six, the Reds, two in the Mets, nothing. Swing and a pop over toward Charlie Neal at third. He's on the grass and he makes the catch. Two away. That will bring up Frank Robinson. Struck out swinging in the first inning and was out on an error by Ron Huff in the top half of the fourth. It was a tough chance for Huff. The official score ruled error. Robinson stole second and scored from there when Johnny Edwards hit his two run homer. Those are the only runs that have been scored in the game thus far. Willie winds and fires. The pitch is swung on a ground ball to third. A big hop to Neal across the diamond to Crane Pool. He's out. In the top of the sixth, the Cincinnati Reds out in order. No run, so it's no errors, none left. At the end of five and a half, it's the Reds two, the Mets nothing. Chugamug. Chugamug. What? Chugamug. 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 What? New from Rheingold, the Chugamug. No more glasses you have to wash, and no more deposits you have to pay. I can even throw my opener away. Why, sure. Chugamug is Rheingold's new wide mouth container with a top that's so easy to open. You just pull the metal tab on top straight up, then straight up, and pull off the top. You drink right from Chugamug's wide mouth. Inside, the same great Rheingold Extra Dry you love in cans, bottles, and on tap. Chug-a-mug. Holds the same, costs the same as a 12-ounce can. chug a -mug. No glasses, no openers, no deposits. No fooling? My beer is Rheingold and dry beer. chug a -mug. 
is a new way to buy beer. Better get some today. Chug a mug, what you say. What a great way to drink some beer. You hear is occasion by the arrival at the plate of Carl Willie, who will be leading off for the New York Mets. This the bottom half of the sixth inning. So far, the Mets have only two hits off Jim O2. Charlie Neal scratched one in the bottom half of the first inning as he led off. Mike Thomas had a clean single to left in the bottom half of the fourth. That's all the hits that the Mets have had off left-hander Jim O2. Willie's run up one time and he flat out to right field. That's right. Pitch is low for ball one. The Reds have three hits, the Mets have two hits, but the Reds lead here by a short two to nothing. Swing and a miss. One and one now to Willie. First, when you're trailing by two runs, uh, you like to get a base run any way you can get it. Set up a situation of tying run at the plate. But until you get to that point, uh, you're not in a position to make much of a move. Pitch to the pass ball in there for a call strike. One ball, two strikes now to Carl Willie. Willie has been up six times this year, still looking for his first hit of the season. O'Toole leaning way over to get a sign. Here's a swing and a ground ball, he's short. Taken by Kitan, it throws on over the first. He got him. One away, nobody on, and Charlie Neal coming up. Charlie was on, uh, the bottom half of the first when he hit a ground ball, the beat rose at second, and on the throw to first, was dropped by Coleman. Charlie was given a base hit, and he struck out swinging in the bottom of the third. We've got plenty of Rhine Gold Extra Dry on hand. Why not open up or order up a cold glass of Rhine Gold Extra Dry? Beer is beer, good taste. Pitch is high for ball one. O'Toole getting his sign. Half of all, it's two and all. Hill has looked down the cookie while the shutter, the sign man at third, and now settles himself back in the batter's box. Ron Hunt is waiting on deck for the next 2 0 pitch. It's high and away, it's 3 0. Standing right in there and waiting now. O2 starts the motion. It's in there. Charlie Neal was taken all the way. It's three and one. Neal looks at Lavagetta again to see if he has turned loose now on three and one. Swinging. Ryan 
That represents the Churchill Tang run at the plate here. The Reds lead by a score of two to nothing. Listen to that crowd.
Run right in for the New York Mets. Runners at second and third, and Frank Thomas coming up. Ed Cranfield got a hold of that ball and lined it out into right center. It was in between, and Tommy Harper came over and fortunately was able to stab the ball. He made a stab at it and came up with it. One run scored as Charlie Neal scored from third. Hunt went from first to third, and now Thomas is being intentionally walked. Frank Thomas is being intentionally passed with first base open. Cliff Cook is on deck. So the Cincinnati Reds have elected to set up a possible double play and set up a play at every base by passing Thomas. Action in the bullpen now for Cincinnati. Al Wavington is throwing. The count is ball three to Frank Thomas. Here it is, ball four, and the bases are loaded. That's the third walk given up by O'Toole. It is the first intentional pass. The bases are loaded. Cliff Cook is coming up. Casey Single called him back to talk to him a moment. Cliff has been up twice. He slides to right and he grounded out third to first. Johnny Edwards goes back out now to talk to O'Toole. The score is the Reds, two in the Mets, one. But the Mets are making a bid here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. They've loaded them up with one man out. With a solid factor here, Cranville drilled out into right center field. And had not Tommy Harper been able to steal it that with the stab that he made, it might have been for more than the two bases he got. Cliff Cook up and waiting. O'Toole with the pitch. Four hundred to ground ball to clear. Taken by Castro. He goes home. He's out there. And that's the only play. It was a force at home. Didn't have to tag him. As Hunt came across the plate, the throw was ahead of him there. A ground ball to third. And the play at home cuts off potential tying run and Jim Hickman is coming up with two men out. The play on run up went five to two if you're scoring. Many cats go in third to Johnny Edwards the catcher. With the bases loaded of course it was a fourth. That move Payne pulled the third, Thomas the second, Cliff Cook is on his first and Jim Hickman is up. He has been up twice, he walked and he grounded out third to first. O'Toole is shaking off one side. Shakes off another side. And now, Johnny Edwards wants to go out to the mound and get checked out to see just exactly what he does want. Al Worthington going in the bullpen for the Cincinnati Reds as the Mets have scored one run here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Come up with two base hits in this inning. So that now the Mets have four hits and the Reds three, but the Reds still lead in the ball game by a score of two to one. Edwards comes back, settles himself behind the plate. Jim Hickman is swinging the bat. O2 works straight away with the bases loaded. Wind up and pitch outside for ball one. Johnny Edwards talks to Ed Trudall, the umpire, for a moment. Now gets set again. O'Toole gets the sign. Jim Hickman with a wide chance up there at the plate. He relaxes now to wait as O'Toole is taking a long time. Now he's set to work and here's the pitch. Hold on, it's a high foul ball coming back and out of play. It's one to one now to Hickman. Tom Sherry is on deck. Two men out for the Mets, batting in the bottom half of the sixth inning. O'Toole is shaking off a side. Takes off another side. Going to shake him a lot, I think. Hickman is to relax with the bat on his shoulder waiting. Down to him is one and one. Here's the pitch. Pull the string inside. It's two and one. Ed Cranville standing on the bag at third. Frank Thomas leading off the bag at second. 
Cliff Cook leading slightly out to Baggett first. Hickman swings the bat as he waits. There's a pitch. Swing and a miss. It's 2 2. Well, as far as the Mets are concerned, this would be a great time for a first day base hit for Jim Hickman. He's 26 today. the motion, 2-2 two, two pitch, check swing, foul ball, into the Cincinnati dugout, Ed Cranepool over there in third has hit safely in six consecutive games now, Ed Benning averages up to 264, of course he got a run batted in with that double. is loaded. Here's the motion for the 2-2 two, two pitch. High and away, he's full at 3-2. and two. So the carousel will be spinning here. With two men out, base is loaded to count 3-2. and two. The runners will start moving on the pitch. Rainbow represents potential tying run at third base. Has it got a pitch from a stretch position this time? There go the runners. Pitch is blowing away. He walked it. And the score is tied. 2 2. That pitch was low and away. Jim Hickman watched it. And you give Hickman a run by the end for drawing the walk with the bases loaded. Rainbow across the plate with the tying run. It's 2 2. Bases still loaded. Two men out and Norm Sherry coming up. Sherry has been up twice. He struck out both times. Worthington still throwing in the bullpen for the Cincinnati Reds. As Jim O2 walked Hickman on a 3 2 pitch. That move, Frank Thomas, down over to third. Cliff Cook to second. Hickman himself is on at first. Here's the wind up in the pitch. High and away for ball one. Jerry steps back, now comes back into the batter's box. Swinging as he waits. Here's the wind up and the pitch. He took a ruffle at that one. Tom Sherry took a cut. It's 1-1 now. Sherry has two home runs this season. Four runs by the end. Settles that helmet on his head as he comes back now. Runners lead at three, second and third. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed. It's strike two, one and two. Excitement galore at the Polo Grounds in New York. Cincinnati Reds two, the New York Mets two. O'Toole has got ahead of Sherry now. One ball and two strikes. Strikeout number seven for O2. Third time tonight he has managed to get Sherry. And on the bottom half of the sixth inning, the Mets got two runs on two hits. There were no errors and three left. The end of six innings to play. The score is the Reds two and the Mets two. Well, yesterday, of course, uh, 
we managed to get a day off because it was the occasion of our anniversary and besides that we couldn't talk anyway and uh, I just want to say we certainly appreciate uh, the kind regards passed along by Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner coming in here right now to carry the rest away is Bob and thank you very much Robert. Our pleasure Lindsay. Lindsay found out yesterday that it was tougher on the old heart to sweat it out when you're not behind a microphone than when you work it. We'll be going along now to the seventh inning. Gordy Coleman will be out to lead off against Carl Willie. Carl in the dugout a long time while the Mets were hitting in the last half of the sixth inning on a chilly night. There's always the danger of a pitcher's arm getting a little bit cool. Well, the excitement has been almost unbelievable as the fans really enjoy themselves in boosting the Mets, and they have been marvelous boosters. This has been quite a homestand with the Dodgers coming in first and Roger Craig beating, beating the Dodgers 4-2. to two. The Giants coming in, Carl Lilly beating the Giants 4-2 to two in that second game Sunday. A homestand in which New York has won six and lost three. By the way, the next Dodger visit will be Wednesday night, July the 10th. Thursday and Friday nights, the 11th and 12th, and Saturday afternoon, July 13th. Giants next come in on July 17th and July 18th. So make your plans now for the middle of July when the Dodgers and Giants come in again. Right now we've got a real good one going between the Mets and the Cincinnati Reds. Gordy Coleman, left-hand batter up against Carl Willey, and he pops the ball high in the air. Charlie Neal is across the line and foul ground, wind blowing it over, and Charlie has it one down. One away, nobody out in the top half of the seventh inning. That brings up Johnny Edwards. He hit one hard, a climbing line drive into the upper deck in right field, scoring the two Cincinnati runs in the fourth inning. Edwards, one hit and two times up. New York, two runs, four hits, and one error. Cincinnati, two runs, three hits, no errors. Now Carl Willey with that big windup. Here's his pitch. Fastball high. One ball and no strikes. Now Carl Willey checking in with Norm Sherry. Edwards, left-hand batter. Tried to hold up on the swing, but it's over for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Dick Sussler coaching at first, Reggie Otero at third for Cincinnati. Mets have the infield deep and around toward right. Ron Hunt back astride into right field, and Crane Bull deep behind the back against Johnny Edwards. A foul ball, back upstairs into the crowd, no play. One ball and two strikes. Johnny Edwards among the top ten hitters in the National League. Young receiver hitting at 345. He came up year before last has done a top-notch job for Cincinnati ever since. Now the pitcher on the way. A foul ball back toward the dugout. Sherry will not have a play. Ball not high enough in the air to give him a shot at it. Paid attendance tonight, 14,474. It undoubtedly would have gone over 20,000 had the weather been better. The total crowd in the ballpark, 15,367. Now Willie delivers one and two. Bounced foul. He barely got a piece of it and stays in there. Tomorrow afternoon, Al Jackson will try for his fourth win of the year. Al, his last time out, beat the Phillies 3-1 to one to win his third against two losses. And pitching for Freddie Hutchinson's Cincinnati team will be Joey J, 20-game winner over the last two years. One ball and two strikes on Johnny Edwards. Edwards, the full hitter. They play him to right. Willie over the head. In comes his pitch. Curve, swing, and miss, strike three. Ball scooped out of the dirt. Take down the green pool. Two men down. Big curveball by Carl Willey. Each pitcher has now struck out seven men. 
real mound duel going here between Carl Willie and Jim O'Toole. Willie hooked up against the hottest pitcher in the National League. O'Toole, the top winner at this point with six wins and one loss. Now the hitter is Leo Cardenas. And the pitch is a curve in the dirt. One ball and no strike. Leo Cardenas singled the left field in the second and was struck out in the fourth inning. One hit and two times up. He became a red regular for the first time last year and had a good year. He held up in time, didn't offer it. It's off the outside corner. Ball two, two and oh. You can tell both pitchers really have their stuff going in this game today with the number of half swings that we have seen. Batters starting after it and realizing they don't want it and trying to check up. Now Carl with a 2-0 and count on Leo Cardenas. Cardenas hitting number seven in the batting order. A ground ball bounced to short. Al Moran plays the knee-high hop. Takes the first to side his out. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. Another great inning for right-hander Carl Willey. At the end of six and a half, seventh inning stretch time, the score, Reds two and the Mets two. Now come along as we tune in Melodious Tones. We belong to the rightful beast and the great society. My baby and me. Oh, we belong to the rightful beast and the great society. Now I do not exaggerate. We think that rhyme most simply great. I say the flavors clean clear through. I say it's quick and sparkling too. I say it's beer and beer. It's quite a fine, and I will tell you why. My baby and me, we belong to the Rhine Gold Beer and the Nation Society. Join the fan club. Try Rhine Gold Extra Dry. It's brisk, bright, and clean clear through. It's beer as beer should taste. It's not bitter, not sweet. It's a dry flavor treat. Won't you try extra dry Rhine Gold Beer? Now the home seventh inning. We're out here in the polo ground, standing up for the seventh inning stretch. Mets came from behind, got two in the last of the sixth inning, and tied it. Now they'll be trying to forge the lead as they send Al Moran up to hit against Jim O'Toole. Moran over two has popped up to the first baseman and tied the bunny's way on and was retired. batting right-handed against the Cincinnati left-hander, Jim O'Toole. Now O'Toole winds, here's his pitch. A little under the knees, one ball and no strikes. We'll bring you up to date on all the scores of the other games at the end of the inning. on Al Moran. Now O'Toole over the head. Around comes the left arm. A foul ball hit high and up toward the roof. It'll be on the roof. Eddie Casco playing even with the bag at third against Moran. Johnny Neal out of the circle on a chilly night. Carl Willie remaining in the dugout. It is not mandatory in the National League for the pitcher to come out of the on-deck circle. One ball, one strike. Now to Al Moran. The game tied 2-2. Strike on the outside corner. Good spot pitch by O'Toole. O'Toole has given up two runs, allowed four hits, walked three, and struck out seven. Eddie Crean pulled doubled in a run, and Jim Heckman walked on three and two with the bases loaded, force again the tying run. Pitch is taken high and outside. Two balls, two strikes. Now 
Now Jim O'Toole checking with his battery mate, Johnny Edwards. Pitching two and two. A foul ball ripped back upstairs and into the upper deck. It's out of play, and the count holds at two and two. Tomorrow will be Ladies' Day. We hope many of you wonderful gal fans of the New York Mets are planning to be here to spend an enjoyable afternoon. Now the Mets trailing Cincinnati by only one game in the standings. Now O'Toole winds and pitches. Inside and high, ball three, and we have a full count, three and two. The New York Mets lost their first eight games this year. And since then, they have bounced back to win 12 of 19. A good homestand. New York has taken six out of nine since coming back home. Now the payoff pitch. He struck him out. Swinging. Moran struck out, and that's number eight for Jim O'Toole. One away and nobody on. That brings up Carl Willie. Give him a hand. He has six quite a ball game. and ground it out short to first. Pitch thrown by O'Toole, an off-speed delivery to foul side. One ball and no strike. Now Carl Willie, batting right-handed, stands deep in the batter's box. Pitch by O'Toole, a ground ball play, third, and it's the base hit, going to center field. Willie really takes the turn, he's on with a ground single. Base hit number five for the New York Mets. They've now out hit the Reds, five to three. That brings up Charlie Neal. an infield hit in two times at bat and in the sixth inning he drew a walk and later scored on Eddie Cranepool's double to right center. One away and one man off. Now O'Toole up in pitching position. Delivers to the plate. A towering pop-up down the third baseline. The third baseman Eddie Casco in foul ground under it makes the catch for the out. Neal retired on a foul pop-up, and that'll bring up Ron Hunt. Ron helped to build a run in the sixth inning when he singled to center field. He has been right smack dab in the middle of a lot of rallies. Ron hitting at 300. In the nice game, Scrappy has one for three, a long fly to left. He was struck out and then singled to center. Pitch on the way. He hitting. Hunt hit by the pitch, and that moves Carl Willie to second base. Ron jumped back, but he caught him up on the left shoulder. That brings up Eddie Crane, though. Eddie doubled to right center field in the sixth inning, driving home Charlie Neal with the first run of the game for the New York Mets. James Monroe High in the Bronx, playing for the first time in the last three years without their slugging first baseman, Eddie Crane, though. They had a 30-game winning streak staffed today by Evander High School in the Bronx. The winning pitcher was Joe DeLucci, and the score was 3-2. to Now O'Toole with two on and two down. Delivers the crane pool, swing and a miss, and a high hard one. batting 264 with one home run and four runs batted in. He got his home run off right-hander Bob Shaw of the Milwaukee Braves, a drive into the upper deck in right center field. Now two runners take a lead. 
Pitch to Greenville. A change up, a high fly ball to short right field. Coming hard is Veda Benson. He makes the catch in shallow right, and the side is out. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two left on in the last of the seventh. And now at the end of seven, the score, the Reds two and the New York Mets two. Well, let's check the scores of the other games. In the National League tonight, Milwaukee came up with four runs in the sixth inning on home runs by Dennis Menke and Roy McMillan. They now lead the Phillies four to one at the end of six and a half. Jenny LeMaster pitching for Milwaukee. Jack Hamilton has replaced Chris Short in the sixth inning. They go to the ninth inning of quite a pitching duel in Pittsburgh. Kurt Simmons against Bob Friend. St. Louis and the Bucks tied nothing, nothing in the ninth. At Houston, Glenn Hobby for the Cubs. Dick Farrell for Houston. Cubs are out in the first without scoring. Later tonight, the Giants and the Dodgers play in Los Angeles. In the American League, the game is being held up because of rain in Baltimore with the Orioles leading the Yankees 3-1 to one on home runs by Louis Aparicio and Al Smith. Whitey Ford for the Yankees, Dick Hall, had replaced Mike McCormick when the rain started to fall. At the end of seven, the Red Sox and Washington Senators are tied 3-3. Three to three. Home runs by Larry Osborne and by Dick Stewart with a man on. Tom Cheney for Washington. Jack LeMabe, a buck last year, on in relief of Ike Gallant. Here are the warm-ups at Minnesota. Orlando Pena for Kansas City and Camilo Pasquale for the Minnesota Twins. Home run by Juan Pizarro with nobody on. The White Sox lead the Angels one to nothing after four and a half. Kenley Fried against Juan Pizarro. Home runs by Rocky Calavito and Dick McCullough, a grand slam. Tigers six, Cleveland nothing after three and a half. Gary Bell against the Tigers, Bill Regan. Right here we go to the eighth inning, and Tommy Harper, the center fielder, will be up for Cincinnati against Carl Willie. The Milwaukee-Philadelphia game is being held up because of rain in the seventh inning. A lot of rain around the eastern seaboard tonight. Tommy Harper is 0 for 2. He's a right-hand batter. Tries to bunt and misses strike one. Tommy Harper coming to the Reds off a big year in the Coast League where he hit 333. Outstanding young prospect. The Reds have two rookies in their lineup in Tommy Harper and Pete Rose, the second baseman. Two. It isn't often on a solid contending ball club that two rookies can break into the starting lineup. Now Carl Willie with a two-strike count. Wines and pitches. Breaking ball just missed. A little bit low. One ball and two strikes. Jim O'Toole will be up next, and then Eddie Casco, who now occupies the on-deck circle. This game now in the eighth inning, tied up two to two. Willie cranking up. Here's his pitch. Ground foul going down the third baseline. One ball and two strikes. Last four games won by the New York Mets have all been humdingers. Willie beat the Giants in the second game Sunday, four to two. Al Jackson beat the Phillies, three to one. Jay Hook beat the Phillies, three to two. Craig and McKenzie combined for a three to two win yesterday. Outside and low, two and two on Tommy Harper. Another real thriller on this homestand was the game Roger Craig beat the Dodgers, four to two, in the opener of the homestand. Now it's two and two on Tommy Harper. Here's the pitch to him. Foul ball off the mask of catcher Norm Sherry. They now have resumed play in the Yankee Oriole game. They are in the eighth inning with Baltimore leading three to one. Now Norm Sherry, who caught a foul tip off the mask, is headed toward the dugout, and he may want a new mitt or a new mask or something of that nature. after another mask. New York, two runs, five hits, and one error. Cincinnati, two runs, three hits, no errors. Now, Willie.
Kelly goes over the head. Down comes the pitch. A foul ball right back over our broadcasting booth and out of play. Now we have warm-up action again for Cincinnati. With the pitcher Jim O'Toole scheduled to hit next, Dom Zanny, recently acquired from the White Sox, has started to warm up. Pitching two and two. Ball three, a little bit high, and a full count on Harper, three and two. Dom Zanny came to Cincinnati in a swap for relief pitcher Jim Brosnan. Carl Willie has a 3-2 pitch coming up to Tommy Harper. Down comes the payoff pitch. Fouled again. Black up stairs and out of play. And Tommy Harper is really giving Carl Willie a run for it. He is leading off here on the eighth inning. count once again. Three balls, two strikes. In it comes. A fly ball hit deep to left field. Frank Thomas is under it waiting. He has it one down. Frank hardly had to move to take it. He was playing in deep on the edge of the warning track. Very few fly balls have been hit. Off Carl Willie in the night's game. Now Jim O'Toole comes on to hit. He has been up twice. He's 0 for 2. Rounded out third to first and was struck out. And O'Toole, like Carl Willie, has pitched an outstanding ball game. Jim O'Toole batting right-handed. A line drive to left field, a base hit, and now each pitcher has raked the other one for a clean hit. That for Cincinnati will be their fourth hit in the game. So we'll wait now while they take the warm-up jacket down to Jim O'Toole, and Eddie Casco will be coming on to hit at the top of the batting order. In the ninth inning at Pittsburgh, George Altman has homered off Bob Friend, and the Cardinals have gone ahead of the Bucks from the top of the ninth inning, one to nothing. Moving out of play. Now we have warm up action again for Cincinnati with the pitcher Jim O'Toole scheduled to hit next. Down Zanny, recently acquired from the White Sox, has started to warm up. Pitching two and two. Ball three, a little bit high, and a full count on Harper, three and two. Tom Zenny came to Cincinnati in a swap for relief pitcher Jim Brosnan. Now Carl Willie has a 3-2 pitch coming up to Tommy Harper. Down comes the payoff pitch. Fouled again, a black tip stairs and out of play. And Tommy Harper is really giving Carl Willie a run for it. He is leading off here on the eighth inning. count once again. Three balls, two strikes. In it comes. A fly ball hit deep to left field. Frank Thomas is under it waiting. He has it one down. Frank hardly had to move to take it. He was playing in deep on the edge of the warning track. Very few fly balls have been hit. Off Carl Willie in the night's game. Now Jim O'Toole comes on to hit. He has been up twice. He's 0 for 2. Rounded out third to first and was struck out. And O'Toole, like Carl Willie, has pitched an outstanding ball game. Jim O'Toole batting right-handed. A line drive to left field, a base hit, and now each pitcher has raked the other one for a clean hit. That for Cincinnati will be their fourth hit in the game. 
So we'll wait now while they take the warm-up jacket down to Jim O'Toole. And Eddie Casco will be coming on to hit at the top of the batting order. In the ninth inning at Pittsburgh, George Altman has homered off by a friend. And the Cardinals have gone ahead of the Bucks from the top of the ninth inning, one to nothing. One away and one on. We're in the top of the eighth inning. The hitter is veteran Eddie Casco. Breaking ball over, strike call. Now Ken McKenzie, who picked up his third win of the year without a loss by working in relief of yesterday's game, has started to warm up in the bullpen. Yesterday, Roger Craig worked eight innings, gave up just two runs, but had to leave the game for a hitter. Mets got three in the ninth inning to win it, three to two, and McKenzie picked up the win. pitch. Round ball, snagged by Willie. He throws to second, there's one, hunts the first, save the first base on a close one. Eddie Casco safe on the fielder's choice. He just beat the throw from Ryan Hunt to Eddie Cranepool. That was a hot grounder that Carl Willie snagged in the glove hand. Now there are two away in the top of the eighth inning, and the batter will be Pete Rose, a left-hand hitter. Rose has grounded out twice and taken a call third strike. He's hitless and three times up. Batting at 262. Pete Rose, left-hand hitter. Youngster from Cincinnati and a fine prospect. In comes the pitch to him. A drive in the air to right center. Here comes Jim Hickman, and he makes the catch on the run. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. At the end of seven and a half the score. The Cincinnati Reds two and the New York Mets two. And now a word from Viceroy Cigarettes. We're the brothers Ford. We're singing out a Viceroy melody. Bob Viceroy's brand new slide top case as modern as can be. Now Viceroy sets the pace with the one and only slide top case. Slides right open, slides shut tight. The crush through slide top case. That's right, that's right, that's right. Slide, take a light. Slide shut so tight. Slide top case exclusive. New, the only crush proof case for you. The latest. The Last of the eighth inning, Frank Thomas will be up against southpaw Jim O'Toole. Another real thriller going at the polo grounds right here at 155th and 8th Avenue. Final two days of the homestand tomorrow and Sunday. A ladies' day game tomorrow and a big doubleheader Sunday. Frank Thomas, line to center, single to left, drew an intentional walk. Frank one for two as he leads off the last half of the eighth inning. New York, two runs, five hits, and one error. Cincinnati, two runs, four hits, and no errors. The Mets will have Thomas, Cook, and Hickman, all right-hand batters, coming up against O'Toole in the last of the eighth inning. Team tied, two to two. Reds with their infield deep and way around toward left. Now O'Toole winding, here's his pitch. Outside, it's ball one. The late innings of the game, particularly, Eddie Casco is really hovering on that line against Frank Thomas, a deadly bull hitter. He wants to guard against the extra base hit in the tie game. An off-speed pitch way outside, ball two, and O'Toole really slowed up on that one. He throttled back. Ball barely had enough momentum to reach home plate, and it was way outside. 2-0. and Now 
Now two will be hanged on the count. Here's his pitch. Ball three. It's outside and high, and it goes three and nothing. Now Frank Thomas, a power hitter, glances down toward, toward Cookie Lavagetto to see if he has the green light if he likes the looks of this three and nothing pitch. Here's O'Toole winding. Now the pitch. He takes all away, and it's over for a call strike, three and one. Thomas batting cleanup, Cook hitting number five, and Hickman batting number six. Pitching three and one. A towering infield pop fly. Calling for it is the shortstop Cardinus behind the mound. He has it one man down. Thomas retired by Jim O'Toole. One away now in the homemade inning that brings up Cliff Cook. Cliff has the power to really bust one. Cliff has flied to right, grounded out third to first, and reached out a fielder's choice. Last Sunday afternoon in the second game when Carl Willie throttled the Giants, it was Cliff Cook who belted a two-run homer to right field to the upper deck. A smash it hard, and it's a finish hit going down the left field line into foul territory. Cook around first is on his way to second. The throw coming in, they may get him. He's out at second base. What a throw by Frank Robinson to Pete Rose, and Cook is out trying for a double. He was actually a victim that time of hitting the ball too hard. You'll never see a ball hit much harder than that with a low shot between Jasko and the bag, but it was off that wall, and the count was played perfectly by Frank Robinson, who rifled a throw that came in all the way in the air to Pete Rose. And Rose put the tag on Cliff Cook. So the bid for the extra base hit falls short on good fielding by the Reds, and the hitter is Jim Hickman. Jim has walked twice, otherwise he's 0 for 1. Curve in the dirt, one ball and no strikes. In the sixth inning with the bases loaded, and two men down on three and two, Hickman drew a walk, and that forced in the dying run. His walk forced in Eddie Crane Bull from third base. Eddie had double driving in Neal. Outside, ball two, two and oh. Jim with 17 RBIs leads the New York Mets in that department. Duke Snyder, the runner-up, with 12. Now O'Toole out of his windup. The pitch bounced foul on the ground, coming right straight back, and it's two and one. Very fine mist is falling. See a few umbrellas coming out now. So the rain that has been festering Philadelphia and Baltimore may be only minutes away here. Down two and one. Down comes the pitch. A high fly hit right down the right field line of its base fair. It'll do it. And it's off the screen a home run. on his own birthday cake, breaking a 2-2 deadlock with the rain beginning to fall in the last of the eighth inning. An opposite field home run, a fly ball that struck the screen attached to the pole in the upper deck. Ball one outside and low to Norm Sherry. And the Mets are out in front by a score of 3-2. Light rain falling, and Jim Hickman with two men down has just homered to break the deadlock and put New York in front. Now the pitch by O'Toole. A swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Well, that's quite a birthday present for Jim Hickman. Jim picking up his second RBI of the night and hacking his total for the year and out to 18. And this rain is starting to get heavier. Now O'Toole winds. In comes the pitch. A swing and a miss by Norm Sherry. One ball and two strikes. 
case you're wondering, should it rain so hard that they had to stop and not be able to resume, the run is good and the game would go to New York. But in all probability, they'll be able to complete it. Now Tool winds the pitch to Sherry, a swing and a miss, he struck him out. That's strikeout number nine for Jim O'Toole. In the eighth inning, New York, one run on two hits, no errors, and none left on. The ovation is for Jim Hickman as he hits for the outfield. Rod Caneal is headed toward left field. We'll have an outfield of Rod Caneal, Jim Hickman, and Cliff Cook as we get set for the ninth inning here in the polo ground. At the end of the eighth, the Mets three and the Reds two. Well, it's exciting following the New York Mets. Fans have really been having a great time in the polo ground. And I'm sure you'll enjoy following the Mets even more if you have in your possession the 1963 official New York Mets yearbook. You'll find Mr. Met on the cover of the yearbook this season. And, of course, inside pictures and backgrounds of KC and the coaches and the players. Many interesting stories about Shea Stadium, the fabulous scoreboard for Shea Stadium, Stadiorama scoreboard. To get your copy by mail, simply send 50 cents for each copy to Met Yearbook, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. For those of you commuting to Manhattan for your convenience, you'll also find the yearbook on sale at Penn Station and Grand Central. going to the ninth inning. Later, Penson will be leading off, and Carl Willie's going to have to do it the hard way. He'll be up against the big hitters of the Reds in the ninth. Big future day two for the New York Mets will be their Mayor's Trophy game with the benefit of Sandlot Baseball in New York when they play the Yankees on June 3rd. Later, Penson is up against Carlson Willie. Now, Carl winding the pitch. Low and inside is ball one. Carl Willie up against the heart of the batting order of the Reds in the ninth inning. Beta Penson has a triple in three times up, a drive that got over the head of Jim Hickman in the first inning. Now Carl over the head, down comes his pitch, a line drive base hit going to right field, and the Reds have the tying run on. Cook makes the backhand play, whips it back in, and the tying run is on with Frank Robinson coming up. Second hit of the game for Veda Penson. Frank Robinson, hitless in three times up, has struck out, reached on an air, and grounded out. One of the most dangerous hitters in the game today, Frank hitting at 292. Now let's see how the Reds will play it. Ron Hunt and Al Moran want to get together and discuss the various possibilities here. Veda Penson, the runner on first, is probably among the Three fast to spin on the game today. Now Carl Willie up into the stretch. Here's the pitch on the way. Foul ball, look out, Matt. Right back to our broadcasting booth and out of play. Gordy Coleman, the on-deck batter, and then Jenny Edwards. In the bullpen, New York has Ken McKenzie and Larry Benard warming up. Light mist filling the air. Three to two, ninth inning. Mets trying to cling to a one-run lead. So 
throw to first. Not in time, but Taylor had to come back headlong to get there. Eddie Crane Bull holding against Veda Penson. Base hit by Penson was only the fifth in the game of Carl Willie. Now the pitch on the way. Foul ball hit in behind Reggie Otero, the third base coach. For the third straight game, it's three to two. We're in the ninth. Mets trying to make that score stand up. Last four games, all won by New York, have been four to two, three to one, three to two, three to two. Ninth inning here, three to two. Frank Robinson with a two-strike count. The pitch by Willie. Curve just missed. Broke off the outside corner of the knees. That one missed by an inch. One ball and two strikes. Now Willie has his sign from Norm Sherry. Here's the pitch on the way. A towering pop-up. It might be playable. Charlie Neal running hard. Running hard over near the track. Has it for the out. One away and one on. Frank Robinson has been retired. Now Gordy Coleman comes on to hit. Gordy, a tough hitter. Bats left-handed. Has been up three times. Rounded out, struck out, and fouled out. are leading 3-2 on the home run by Jim Hickman. Ron Hunt in the check with Carl Willie. It's all over in Pittsburgh. The home run in the ninth inning off Bob Friend by George Altman stands up. The Cardinals beat the Pirates tonight 1-0 to behind Kurt Simmons. Judson Houston no score at the end of two. Hobby against Farrell. They're held up by rain in Philadelphia with the Braves leading the Phillies 4-1. Talking now to Carl Willie. Now they break up the conference, and here we go. One on and one out of the ninth inning. Gordy Coleman, the batter. They play him around toward right. He's a full hitter. Now the pitch. Curve, swing and miss, strike one. Johnny Edwards is the on deck batter. Eddie Cranepool holding against the speedy Veda Penson at first base. Now Willie comes to the stop position. There goes Penson. The pitch is swung on and fouled off. No play. They were playing hit and run, and it's fouled off. And while we wait for him to return, we'll pause for station identification. Time? 8-10 on your dial. WGY connected either smoothest sound around the time, 25 minutes until 11. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Cantor. For the Reds, they have Veda Penson on first, and a two-strike count on the batter, Gordy Coleman. One away in the top of the ninth inning with the Mets leading 3-2. to two. Now Willie turns and throws to first, not in time. Veda scampering back. Willie up in pitching position. Delivers to the plate. A changeup outside. One ball and two strikes. Real good pitch by Carl Willie, but it just missed. If that ball had been over, it would have been taken. He had Gordy Coleman fooled on him with a count, one ball and two strikes. Now Penson edging off first with his lead, one man away. Here's the pitch on the way, a swing and a miss, he's striking off. Carl Willie now has struck out eight men in the game. Matching the previous high in one game turned in by Jay Hook two days ago against the Phillies. Take your pardon, Jay struck out 10 in that ball game. Two down now in the ninth inning. Here is Johnny Edwards. He hit a two-run homer in the fourth inning. One hit and three times up. Two down, ninth inning, Penson leading off first. Now the pitch on the way. Fastball over strike call. 
Willie Dodd, Gordy Coleman on a high hard one. And here's the first pitch over now to Jenny Edwards. Edwards hitting at 341. Ron Hunt playing him about three steps into right field. Green pool is holding against the runner because Simpson is lightning fast. Now the stretch by Willie. Here's the pitch on the way. A breaking ball outside. It's one ball and one strike. Well, you can hardly imagine the excitement of the last five games of this home stand. Four to two, three to one, three to two, three to two. Now it's three two here in the ninth inning. One ball, one strike on Johnny Edwards. Willie really comes to the set to face it. Here's his pitch. Ball two, it's outside. And the count two and one now on Johnny Edwards. Mets broke the tie in the last of the eighth inning on the home run by Jim Hickman. Jim hit a fly ball that hit the screen attached to the foul ball in the upper deck and right. Two and one on Johnny Edwards. Now Willie checks his runner. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. And the count is two and two. Johnny Edwards. Carl Willie, ready to go right back to work, looking in the arm, Sherry for his sign. Everybody on the edge of their seat right here. Here's the stretch. Now the pitch on the way. The runner goes. The ball is popped up. Neil chasing it in foul ground. My God, he's got it. The game is over. The Mets win 3-2. Nothing on a three hitter. Beat the Giants four to two and has now beaten the Reds by a score of three to two. This crowd really celebrating the victory now as they rise to cheer the Mets. As the Mets head toward the center field clubhouse, they have just won their fifth consecutive ball game, the longest winning streak in the history of the new New York Mets. And Carl Willie continues to pitch. Strong baseball. Carl winning his third against a single loss, besting Jim O'Toole, the hottest pitcher in the National League, who was riding a five-game winning streak and had won six and lost one. Tomorrow afternoon will be Ladies' Day, and the pitchers in the game tomorrow will be Alvin Jackson and Joey Jay. The game starting at 2 o'clock. So certainly hope you're planning to be on hand. Now we'll check the line score and have the wrap-up on tonight's game in just a moment. Boy, right now, for sure, New York has just about everything. All the excitement you can imagine right here on the polo grounds. And if that doesn't satisfy you, there's parks, football, golf, lakes, and amusements. You know, people in New York have a lot to choose from, and that goes for beers, too. There are quite a few brands of beer on the market, and I think it's really something that of all the brands of beer available, New Yorkers have made Rhine extra dry their favorite. And that's quite a tribute to the quality of Rhine Gold. Rhine Gold is brewed of the choicest ingredients. Brewed the long, slow, costly way, the extra dry way. And extra dry tells you why Rhine Gold is so wonderful, so much more refreshing. It's beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean clear through. Why not enjoy the extra refreshment of Rain Gold Extra Dry Beer? Join all the millions who say, my beer is Rain Gold, the dry beer. The New York Mets have just won their fifth consecutive ball game. By doing so, they have moved ahead of the Cincinnati Reds in the National League standings. And over the five-game winning streak, pitching coach Ernie White has seen his pitchers turn in tremendous jobs. The winning streak started with the second game of the giant doubleheader on Sunday. In that game, Carl Willie cooled off the sizzling hot San Francisco Giant bats, pitched a magnificent ball game, and the Mets won it by a score of 4-2. to two. Then on Monday, Al Jackson subdued the Phillies 3-1. to one. On Tuesday, Jay Hook struck out 10 men and won a real thriller, 
weighing in with a base hit and stretching it to a double. The Mets winning 3-2. to two. Yesterday, Roger Craig in eight innings gave up only two runs. Ken McKenzie blanked the opposition in the ninth, and the Mets won again 3-2. to two. They make it number five on the superb hurling of Carl Willie. Carl now has three complete games to his victor, to his credit. He beat the Cubs three to nothing on a three-hit shutout. He beat the San Francisco Giants four to two, and tonight has beaten the Cincinnati Reds by a score of three to two. And so Carl Willie has won his third against a single loss, and he beat a hot pitcher in Jim O'Toole. O'Toole was six and one and was riding a five-game winning streak. The batting star of the game, Jim Heckman, who put the frosting on his own birthday cake with a home run his fourth of the year to break a 2-2 tie in the last half of the eighth inning. So happy birthday to Jim Heckman, and congratulations to all the Mets on an outstanding ball game. Mets winning it by a final score of 3-2, three, three runs, seven hits, and one error. Cincinnati, two runs, five hits, and no errors. Carl Willie all the way for the victory, and Jim O'Toole the loser. And tomorrow it'll be Alvin Jackson against Jerry J. Ladies' Day game starting at 2 o'clock. Well, that wraps up another New York Mets game brought to you by Rain Gold Extra Dry and Viceroy Cigarettes. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. We'll be with you tomorrow afternoon. Hope you'll be right here on the polo grounds. If not, we'll bring you all the action. Tonight's broadcast came to you through the courtesy of Leibman Brewery, Brooklyn, New York, brewer since 1837, and the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. Right now, I'd like to remind you to enjoy Viceroy's cigarettes. Viceroy's not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Now, this is Bob Murphy saying so long for Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner. Our statistician, Matt Winnick, our engineer, Joe Burnham, and for Rangold. Rangold Extra Dry. Those two little words, Extra Dry, tell you why Rangold is beer as beer should taste. Why Rangold is preferred by more New Yorkers than any other beer. Rangold is brewed from the very choicest ingredients. Brewed the long, slow, costlier way for flavor that is brisk and bright and clean, clear through. So fill up your glass with a nice cold, ice cold, refreshing glass of good rain gold extra dry. The final score as the New York Mets win their fifth in a row, the Mets three and the Reds two. So long everybody, this is the New York Mets Baseball Network.